All right, and the other one I wanted to show you is the one we talked about so many times, the padding oracle attack, which you can go through here and solve pretty simple, a pretty simple case of it. So it's the same thing. You just do it all in immediate Python right here. So I'll just um, leave and clear the screen. And then Python 3 again. All right. So here's the background. We talked about this before. If you encrypt 48 bytes, you have three blocks of 16 bytes. You, add the, you XOR the initialization vector with the plain text and add the key, go through encryption, and you get the first blocks of ciphertext. You take the output of this as the IV for the next block and the output of this as the IV for the next block. So your three blocks of plain text turn into three blocks of ciphertext. That's AES in cipher block chaining mode. If you have 47 bytes, then you've got a byte that's missing here, and so you have to somehow pad it. And the system we use, PKCS number seven, is if you only need one byte of padding, you use zero one. If you need two bytes, you use zero two, zero two, and so on. So when you decrypt it, if you take the ciphertext and decrypt it, you will always get a zero one here for the one byte of padding because you had 47 bytes of plain text. So the correct decryption will give you a zero one as the last byte. Now, if you modify a byte, if you modify this byte of ciphertext, it scrambles this whole block because that's the issue we talked about, diffusion and uh, whatever the other property is, diffusion and confusion are the two properties. Changing any part of the ciphertext will reflect every part of the plain text. So this whole byte will turn into garbage, this whole block, but it'll only change this one byte here with the XOR operation. So, all right, so we can do this if I encrypt with AES here. All right, so here I've got a key. I just put in six, uh, 16 bytes of key and 16 bytes of IV. I create AES mode cipher block chaining with the IV. And then I encrypt this string, hello from AES, and I forgot to put a closing quote on it there. So that's the input plain text is A. So now I encrypt it and print the ciphertext. All right, so that's the encrypted block, and I've only got 16 bytes. This is one block of data encrypting to one block. Now I can decrypt it. I have to make a new object, like I mentioned before, a new AES object, and then I can decrypt it. So I just cipher decrypt, cipher text, and off you go. There's the original data, and there's the uh, hex encoded version of it. So encryption and decryption works like that. Now we're going to do padding and chaining. So here is a text that is 47 bytes long. All right, now if I want to encrypt it, I'm going to have to add a one to the end, a single byte of one, because it won't encrypt unless I fill the block. So this now makes ciphertext. Um, I will encrypt not just the plain text, but the plain text plus one, a byte of one at the end. And so there's the, um, the ciphertext in hex. And here's the modified ciphertext. Now, so I made two, I made one. This is the original one with correct padding. This is the message with incorrect padding. I put a 255 in the last byte instead of a one. And as you can see, that changes everything. Well, actually not everything. Let me, let me bring this out. Because I changed that one value there. The first block is unchanged. Um, right down, uh, ciphertext. Oh, okay, right there, I'm just looking at plain text. So I changed one byte. And you'll find it someplace towards the end here. Um, let me check my diagram here. It is the 5C has changed to FF. This 5C has changed to FF. I'm just looking at the plain text. So I have 48 uh, bytes of plain text, and it's all the same except that one byte has changed. Now I'm going to, um, all right, and now I'm going to decrypt it, which is here. There, I decrypt the um, ciphertext and I decrypt the mod, and here we go. And so these are identical, and they're going to start being different around here. I have 36, 6, okay. It's identical. 
746, 747. Okay, here's the first block, and this is exactly the same. The next block is totally different, 65, 70, and so on. The third block is going to start being identical again, 66, 7665, 7665. So this block is totally different. This block is all the same, except the last byte went from 0, 1 to A2. So there you can see the pattern. By changing this one byte here, I changed a whole block and just one byte at the end. That's the key to doing this. So now we make a vulnerable function, an easy way to do it in Python to simulate what happened in vulnerable software. You make this thing called padr.py in the directory you're working in, and now you can import from this library. You can make your own Python library that simple. Just have a uh, find, to find a few functions in a code. So save that, call it pador.py, and then you can import from pador.py encur ducker to encrypt and decrypt. So now we can just encrypt and decrypt with that padding oracle system, which is designed to demonstrate this vulnerability. So, um, uh, right, it didn't find, okay, I must be in the wrong directory. Let's see where I am. Um, PWD, I gotta be in 141. Okay, and I got to be in pador. There, and now if I do ls, there's my pador.py. Okay, I can do it in here. All right, now there we go. From pador, I encrypt, import encrypt and decrypt. Here's my 47 byte sentence. I encrypt it, and there's the answer. So this is the encrypted um, 47 bytes. Now I'm going to decrypt it. And notice the decryption ends in 0, 1. It's correctly padded with a 0, 1, and so the decryption finds a 0, 1 at the end. Now we're going to modify it. We're going to make a modified one that changes the last byte and then decrypt that, and now we get padding error. So if the padding is correct, you get the answer. If the padding is incorrect, it tells you you have a padding error, and that is the fundamental vulnerability. The fact that you can tell this case from that case means I know if the last byte is correct, and that we're going to uh, use. So here's the game. We're going to um, determine these intermediate values here, and then we can craft a message that will decrypt to something. So we want to take a sentence that does not include the word win and insert the word win. So. Here's the sentence you start from. The sentence clearly says, I'm a loser. And I want to add the word win to that. I'm going to place that. So I encrypt it. And here's the encrypted stuff that's sent at the other end. And I want to make forged ciphertext that will decrypt to something containing the word win. So I want to find those intermediate values. And here's how you might find the first one. You can try various values. What this will do is it's going to just try five guesses. It's going to take the, um, the 32nd byte, the end of the second block, and replace it with 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then decrypt each one. And all of them have padding errors. So that's reasonable, because I've changed it to something wrong. And, all right, so now what I want to do is find valid values. So I'm going to find the ones that do not have padding errors. Now that I know that's going to say padding error if it's wrong, so I'm going to try all possible values of 256, and I'm only going to print out the ones that do not return padding error. And now there are two that are correctly padded. One of them is going to be the original value. Now it's bytes of 31. So if I look at original of 31, that's 154. So this one is correctly padded because that was the original unmodified ciphertext. This is the one that must result in a 0, 1 at the end to be correctly padded. So I now know a value of one of these intermediate values. I know that um, it is, can calculate it from that. Now, one, this, is an incom this is an irritating thing because it gave me two answers. I'd rather just have one answer. So what I'm going to do is fill all the, these values here with just AAAA. So they're going to decrypt into garbage. So now there will be nothing valid except the one that ends in 0, 1. There will not be the original one anymore. This is a way to make it more efficient. So I replace. A, the rest of the block I'm not using with junk. And now, only one value will be padded, and it's the 147. The original value will no longer decrypt correctly, so now I can easily find the good ones. All right. So now that I have an algorithm, I can calculate intermediate 47. 
which is, of course, by just XORing these other two values. You XOR this ciphertext, and uh, I know this, and the last byte is calculated, so I can get the, get the intermediate value. It's ciphertext 31, XOR plain text 47, and I know that the plain text is 0, 01. So I know this is 0, 01, and I know what number I put there, so I just XOR them, and I'll have the number that must go here. That's all you have to do. So I can deduce the value of that byte in this calculation, and that byte is um, 146. All right, and so now to find the next byte back, it's easy enough. You fill in what you know the correct value is of the other one to make, figure out how to make a 2 for the other one, and then you, you make this, this one 2, and then you modify this byte until you get a 2 there, and then you can calculate this. So that's it. That's the, that's the game. You can find the bytes one by one, going back, and you had to find four of them. And when you're done, you'll find um, four intermediate values, and you can now encode win. So here, I'm going to change the ciphertext to make the last four things win and then a one to have proper padding. So this is the uh, forged ciphertext the original, then I replace four bytes with carefully chosen bytes, and then more of the original. And when you decrypt that one, here, you get a loser, and then win. You inserted this little message win somewhere. So that shows that you have successfully forged the ciphertext without knowing the key. And that's the essence of the padding oracle vulnerability. And so there is a doing exactly what's above is worth something, and then there's a challenge which can take a while um, where you have to put your name on a winner's page here. In fact, let's see who's on there. Oh, I guess it's empty right now, but it should be there once people solve it. Anyway, um, all right. That's what I wanted to show you. That's the joy of the padding oracle, and a lot of students had a lot of fun solving this one. It can take quite a while. I highly recommend just putting your initials on there. It's hard to make long solutions, but you can do it. All right.